Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're doing well today. I'm doing pretty well. I'm bringing you another tutorial and this one is going to be a detailed startup for our F16C block 50 that we have in DCS. Uh, I'm going to talk through how to rearm and how to set up our stores that need to be turned on. Uh, I'm going to talk through what all of the switches that I'm flipping are doing, how to align the HMD and a few other things like that. So without further ado, we're going to get started here. Go into the F2 view so we can see our jet and we're going to rearm here. I'm going to take this livery here, 179th Fighter Squadron, have glass by this guy. Go download all of his liveries, they're amazing. We're going to put a couple AMRAMs here, our FOX-3 active radar guided missiles, AIM-9X infrared guided missile, a couple of HARMs, our anti-radiation missiles, our high-speed anti-radiation missiles, fuel tanks, ECM pod, targeting pod, and HTS. Our harm targeting system and we'll just set this to some random number ground crew says coffee copy copy excuse me um and in just a minute here we'll get our stores put on the jet so watch for those Got our harms now. Amram. Sidewinder. Another Amram and our third Amram there. All right. Now what we're going to want to do here first of all is we're going to want to put our parking brake on. Oops. Sorry. It's, it is conflicting with my keybind. We put our parking brake on. Turn our battery to one. This will connect our battery, obviously, and we'll power the battery bus. We're going to test our flight controls with the right click hold there. Check that our flick is powered. Our flight control system is getting power. You can see that indicated by these lights here. And we'll set this to main power. This will connect our generators, allow us to use our jet fuel starter, and get the engine started here. So, our jet fuel starter panel. Start one and start two. This will power one or two hydraulic pressure accumulators, which will spin up our jet fuel starter, which will in turn spin up our main engine. So we're going to click this to start two. It's our standard. Here's the JFS coming up, and we're going to wait for our RPM gauge right here to start spooling up and this will settle at about 20%. And one thing to note is you need to wait for it to stop moving and to settle at 20, between 20 and 23% before you move your throttle to idle. So there we go, it's settled. So we are going to need our throttle idle, which by default is right shift and home. So we're going to do that now, move our throttle idle, watch our RPM coming up. Settles there at about, what's that, 67, 68%, something like that. Next thing we want to do is come back here, turn on all of our avionics power. So we have our mission computer, store station, MFDs, our multifunction displays, UFC. This map switch and this data link switch, I don't believe do anything in the block 50 that we have, but I turn them on anyway for simplicity's sake. And turn our GPS on. We also want to turn on our MIDS LPT which stands for, sorry to look at my notes, Multifunctional Information Distribution System Low Volume Terminal, which is for the data link system that we do have in this. And we want to set our INS to store heading or norm. I'll set it to store heading, though it'll be a bit faster. And we can see that by default on our DED, we have our INS page up, and we're just going to want to wait for this timer that's coming down to get to 10, and it'll say ready or align, and 
blinking, and then we'll set this switch to nav, the INS switch. But we can turn on our HUD here with this top left roller there. Turn that on. And we can come back to our left panel here and do some tests. So we'll test our probe heat. Check that that's working in case we need, we're in icing conditions and we need to turn that on. Fire and overheat detect gives us our light there, indicating that there's an overheating issue. And malfunction indicator lights to give our audio warnings and test all the lights. Alright, I'm going to close our canopy here because it's kind of loud. I'm going to left click and hold that little switch in there. Or left control C. It's closed, and then we'll close this clip there to lock the canopy. If you want to perform a flight control system, a flickus bit, then you can right click this switch, and that will move all of our controls around and test that they're all functioning. In the meantime, we will turn the master IFF master switch to norm. Don't need to worry about any of these switches here. Set our lights. I'll keep anti-collision off. Actually, I'll turn it. I'll just leave it at one by default. Leave that. I'll turn our wing and fuselage lights on. See all our lights are on here, and you can see our flight control systems being manipulated. And that is the built-in test done. And now you can see that our INS is done. On our HUD, it has a line linking. And on our INS page on the DVD, the data entry display have ready blinking. So we're going to come back here to our avionics power and set our INS switch to nav. And then we can hit the dauber switch back to return with a left click there. Uh, next thing, we're going to turn our jammer on. I'll set this to standby, and I'll set the transmit mode to 1 and turn all these modules on. I will talk about the ECM and our countermeasures in more detail in the future. We can turn on now all our, adjust all our volumes, COM1 and COM2, I usually leave those all the way up. Tack in, I'll turn down, ILS I'll turn down, RET I'll turn down, and missile as well. This is our sidewinder tone. You can turn this radio on if you want to. This is just a backup UHF radio, which you can't use unless you set the CNI, the communications and indicator switch back to backup. but we'll just leave that to UFC, as is the default. Turn our threat warning on, and if you want to be able to see the search radars that are painting or spiking you, then you can press the search button there, which will display those. Turn our HMD on, our symbology for our helmet mounted queuing system. Turn our RWR and jammer switches here. These will basically enable the CMW, CMDS, the countermeasure dispensing system, to get information and work in tangent with um, or in conjunction with the RWR and the jammer to dispense countermeasures with programs automatically. We're going to set a program to three. These all can be adjusted in the DED. I like three by default. That's what I usually go to. We'll set our dispense mode to standby. Chaff and flare, turn those on. Don't need to worry about one and two because they don't do anything. Manual mode, what this will do is basically will enable you to manually dispense a program. Semi automatic, it will give you a prompt. It'll say chaff flare when you are being locked by a target or getting shot at by a missile. And you can then dispense countermeasures like that. In automatic mode, if you're getting locked, then it will start dispensing chaff for you. And bypass mode, will just enable you to just dispense single countermeasures, all with countermeasures dispensing switch forward. Uh, CAT3 already in here. That will basically eliminate or limit the angle of attack that you can attain. Uh, CAT3 is what you want to be in if you have any kind of air to ground stores. If you don't have any, then you want to be in CAT1. It will give you a warning that says config so you will have to switch your stores config switch to whatever one it isn't on so that that light goes out. Usually that'll happen if you have you know some bombs or something that you loaded up 
and you were in Cat 1, it'll tell you that you had to switch to Cat 3. Or if you drop all your bombs and you just have missiles and stuff left, then it will give you that warning and then you flip it up to Cat 1. Now, taxi light, we can leave that off for now. We don't really need it, or we can put it on as we're about to taxi out. Master arm, laser arm, don't need either of those on right now. We come over to this panel now, to the right of the stick, turn our radar altimeter on, our fire control radar, and our right and left hard points. And what those are gonna do is power up our targeting pod on the right hard point and the harm targeting system on our left hard point there. Now, one more thing we'll do, oops, actually we can uncage our standby ADI, just line that line up right in the middle. Now we're going to align our HMD here. Sometimes it's not perfectly aligned to begin with, so I like to do that. I'm going to go to list, zero, this R clear, to select our helmet mounted queuing system, sequence, and then we're going to press zero, and it's going to pull those up. Now what you're going to want to do is press the enable switch here, which by default is enter, so we're going to want to line up our crosses there and press and hold that. And then press zero again, and then zero for azimuth and elevation. You can adjust this, and you're going to adjust that with your, uh, what is it, the radar cursor switch that you use to slew your teapot and everything, so we'll adjust those. Try, oops, it's a little bit sensitive. Come on. There we go, that's good enough. Press zero again, and then press zero and roll, that's fine. And then return. Now our display is all lined up here. One more thing to do here that I forgot to mention, so I had to record this afterwards, is to power on our harms or JDAMs or anything like that that we have. That was kind of the point of why I put those in there and I forgot to do it. But we're going to want to click on our air to ground master mode button here, switch to our air to ground mode, and it'll automatically pull up our SMIS page, our stores management system page here. And you can see we have two AG88s, that's two AGM88 harms that we have there and there. But under here it says power off, so we want to click and turn that power to on. And then we can exit out of this, and those will now be powered up for when we are going to be employing them. So, hopefully that was helpful to you. If you have any questions about what any of the other switches or anything does, if I glossed over something that I forgot to mention, uh, please let me know in the comments, I'll be happy to answer your questions. And uh, if you actually, one more thing for, before I let you go, don't go yet. Um, if you want any more like help or anything, or want to talk to myself or anybody else, on my discord directly please join the discord i'll put that in the description the link for that you might be able to fly with myself or my friend jimbo vr or anybody else or even just ask questions or whatever for anybody who is knowledgeable about the f-16 or any other module for that matter and we'll be happy to help you out uh, but do consider doing that like subscribe etc um, anyway have a good one and i hope that i will see you in the next video